Okay, it is one o'clock and um, I'm sure Niall will have plenty to share with us. So welcome to Canvas Hour. Uh, this is Dr. Niall Barnes session on uh, creating assignments. And um, without further ado, let me uh, turn you over to Niall from the School of Pharmacy. Thank you, Niall. Niall. Hi there, how's everyone? Good. Alive, kicking. Monday and excited about being at work, right? Sure. <laughs> I love fiction. <laughs> well, and I'm trying to figure out why Michael is at a train. I guess this beats being at the train station waiting on a train, but not by much is what I figure. So, yeah. Okay. So um, one of the things that uh, I did in March and April when we did this was actually not go through a bunch of slides. I do have some slides, but what I'm going to do is use the slides to prompt me to open up um, my canvas and show you how I do things rather than just a bunch of screenshots, okay? And first thing I need to do is after clicking, got it, the meeting's being recorded, is acknowledge Melissa Dagny. Melissa and I had a conversation uh, about this in March or April. And a lot of the comments that I have, I cheated and they are plagiarized directly from an email that uh, Melissa sent to me about some things to talk about. So without further ado, let's talk about some of them. Um, course summaries and calendar entries. You know, when you, when you make an assignment, one of the things that will happen is if you assign a due date for it, that will show up on the student's calendar in Canvas. And you can then actually go to the Canvas calendar and drag it around. Um, let's say you set it up for Tuesday at th you know, three o'clock in the afternoon and then you're like, oh no, I'll make it four. You can just go to the calendar and drag it. The bad news is that if you go to the calendar and you're looking at something else and you drag the wrong one, there's not a, hey, did you remember to, did, you know you're doing this? You know, there's not a checkbox to, to check you and say, are you doing it? You know what you're doing. So one thing to be careful of. So let's just sort of look at that. Let me, whoops, I, I'm sharing the wrong thing. I'm sh let me share the desktop instead of sharing the item. All right, are you seeing the desktop now? Yes. Great. All right. So here's a course summary for introduction to interprofessional um, education. And here is the details. And this is way back in February. So if I go back to February 10th, it's on that date that these things were due. If I were to open that date up and move it someplace else, they would move in the course summary. All right, I'm gonna go back to slides. And then the real reason I brought up interprofessional education uh, course first um, is to talk about module control when you're making assignments. So this, one of the things that's a little confusing about Canvas uh, to new users is files, pages, and modules. And to me, files are my filing cabinet. And there's a copy of everything that I put in Canvas in that filing cabinet. Pages are chapters that I've pulled files from and organized. They stay in my file cabinet, but I think of them sort of as pages in a book. And I've organized, I, I pull them out, I pull copies out of the file cabinet to, to populate that. And then modules are collections of pages. And that's sort of how I look at it. So one of the things to think about when you're building assignments is, you know, where does it sit? 
So if I'm going to build an assignment, I build the assignment in and I put it in my file. I then have to call that file up from someplace and it's gonna be called up from a page. And if I organize the pages together, it's a module. Sometimes I don't organize them into a bunch of pages into a, that my module is a single page. And one of the things to think about when you do that, I'm gonna open up this module here. And so there was a page, let me go back a slide. So this is a page that is the introduction to this course. And I click on module and I get that first module for it. There are a bunch of other pages. And then at the end of all those pages is an assignment. I'm going to click on that assignment and sort of walk you through it. Normally, when you hit assignments the first time, you'll have to edit. It'll come up to be edited. So I'm just going to click on edited, edit as if it were a new assignment. I get to name it, I get to describe it, and then I get to assign values to things like points. Um, in this particular course, there was just assignments. So in other courses, I have assignments, quizzes, edit, uh, uh, essays, exams. So in this one, it's only assignments, but I could make a new one, I can make this um, an essay. How do you display the grade? We get choices. And I'm going to go back and make an entire ex uh, example here for you in a moment. Well, you can choose how you want it to be displayed. You can make it a practice assignment effectively by simply clicking the box that don't count toward this toward the final. If the student needs to submit something, you get to control that, including no submission. For example, I teach a, a canned course. It's promulgated by the American Pharmacists Association for pharmacists to learn to be immunizers. Um, nursing medicine faculty might recognize ACLS, Advanced Cardiac Life Support. Let's say we're doing that canned course that has its own exams. We're not, I'm not going to put them into Canvas. I'm going to put, I want to put the grade in. So I would click no submission, but I can still create an assignment and create an entry in the grade book. This is another important point about assignments. To have an entry in the grade book, you need to create an assignment. So if you've got, um, let's say um, somebody in here, uh, I'll pick on Maria Felix Ortiz for a moment. Let's, uh, if Maria says at the beginning of the semester, I'm gonna pass out five by eight cards and you write something about yourself on it. I've got a little rubric for you. I'm gonna grade those and I'm gonna put a grade into this. That could be a no submission. It could be an on paper as well. And it can be an external tool if the tool talks to Canvas where the tool can directly import it. You can also choose things like if you're going to have an online, do they just have a text entry? Do they type it in? Like it's a single short essay. Uh, is it a website? Do they answer their, do they build a website for your course? Do they use a Twitter account and they put that website in? Do they record something? This is one of my favorite things to do. I will have students record an, an interview with a patient or record the counseling of a drug with a patient and then they upload it here. I can let students, other students annotate it. If I'm going to have that a file upload, I can restrict what kind of files. Now, I'll tell you, I've gotten away from this a little bit because I've had some headaches where I put in PDF and the student put in PDF with all caps and it didn't seem to go across. 
or I've got a student who can create a Word document but just doesn't have the savvy to con convert that to PDF. So then I have to put PDF and Word, uh, the point doc. Or they've got the modern browser and other people have the uh, or modern version and it's docx. So I've sort of stopped using that restrict upload. But I can understand people's need to use it. Uh, let's see, there was a question pop up. So somebody says for face to face, they turn into assignments directly. What's the best? No paper. So I would put no submission. Uh, most of the time, if you've got a if you've got a rubric that you're going to use on Canvas, paper submission may work better. So you can put that rubric into Canvas. Does that help out, Diana? Could you say that again? So if you've got somebody's going to submit a paper and you're going to have a rubric for it that's in Canvas, then paper submission is probably the better way. So you can you can build that rubric in Canvas and show them your grading electronically. If you're going to grade it by hand on the paper with your red pen, then if you and your red pen are never going to be inside, um, then you should, you, you might want to do no submission. But frankly, paper submission basically confuses some of the audience members that they don't have to do anything for this. If they're doing it someplace else, like my canned courses, and you've got access to those grades, uh, I would uh, use no submission. But if they've got to turn something in, paper usually is the right answer. Thanks. Sure. Um, number of attempts. You can make unlimited attempts. Oh. How to, how to choose submission, we choose file uploads, okay, to submit a paper. This is how you choose it. That's not how the students do it. And that's one of the things here. We don't, we're not looking at how the students do it just yet. We can choose how many times they get to upload. And frankly, I've gone to unlimited, but I make sure I put a deadline and I tell students that I'm only grading the last one you put in. I'm not grading your best one because I had students do two different things, post both of them and say, well, I did that in the other one. You just didn't grade it. Now, if I'm grading the last one, okay? There is a plagiarism review through Turnitin. Uh, depending on what it is, if it's essay, I I often use this, but you know you have to pay attention to those turn it in um, evaluations. You'll see lots of um, plagiarism reports that turn out to be citations, that turn out to be quotes that are properly cited. So you have to be careful with that piece as well. And if you do use it, you I'm a, I'll switch to turn it in. Then there are several choices that pop up. And you can exclude bibliography, exclude quotes. But if they forget to put their quotes in quotes sometimes, then you'll me it'll mess it up. But since this is a real course, I'm going to turn that back off. Um, if you're going to do group assignments, you need to create the groups before you create before you click this box. So I've made assignments before that I knew were going to be group assignments, but I don't click this box and I don't publish it for students to see it until I've gotten their groups worked out. And Melissa has come in very handy for me to get groups before. And actually, I think she changed everybody's um, permissions to make that a little bit easier at some point. Um, there's peer reviews. I've used peer reviews some, but I don't have a lot of experience with them. If somebody else does, I would appreciate listening to their talk. Um, 
Finally, assignments. And the, who gets the assignment? Generally speaking, we say everybody in the class. But let's say uh, Lynn Downs missed the deadline and I'm going to let Lynn submit it separately. I can add another assignment and add that student's name in and it only populates a due date available and until for that one person. Does that make sense? So you wanna do special for the student that was out with COVID. I mean, we sort of did that a lot this last spring. So we could do that as well. You can also assign to sections. Let's say, I mean, I have a lab that has a Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday section. We made sections in, in Canvas for them and they each had different, had the same assignment, but different deadlines. So I could go assign to Tuesday section, assign to Wednesday section, assign to Thursday section, okay? There's a due date, there's an available and an until. If you put an until date, it's no longer available to them to turn in late. So I have a colleague that will not accept late assignments. If you're not gonna accept a late assignment, make your due date and your until date identical. There will be no late assignments, okay? It, no, it, um, Maria says, it. will it be uh, shown as submitted late? It will be not submitted. They will not be allowed to submit it. And the faculty member that I work with uh, that says, I don't accept late. If you're late, you get a zero and that's it. There is no negotiation with him. Niall, if you, if you put it uh, available indefinitely, will it show as submitted late? It will. Okay, great. It will. So, you know, whatever your uh, due date is, if, if I change this to, you know, the 11th, you know, uh, this would give them one extra day, but it would flag it as late. So you, you can tell students that, you know, I'll accept it up to one day late and here's the penalty and it'll automatically be flagged as late. And you can build that into a rubric for accepting late papers minus whatever percent you want. Does that help? So I'm gonna close that. All right, let me look at, let's go to another slide that we looked at ahead. Ah, so when we're talking about modules, one of the things in the modules is deleting versus removing. So if I wanna remove something from a module, but I go to file and let's say, what is IPE? And I go to my file and I find what is IPE in my list that was, I'm sorry, intro to patient safety, let's do that one. If I go to intro to patient safety and I delete the file, it's gone. It's out of my file cabinet. It is gone. The references to it in the modules and pages are still there. So it's like going on the internet and finding a dead link. If instead, go back to modules, and I'm going to jump to a different module here. Where was the patient safety? Well, I think it was in this one. If instead of deleting it, I remove the link to it, it stays in my files, but is gone from the page or module. Does that make sense to folks? And remember, we're not actually making a copy of it for the page or module. We're using the copy in the file. So if you go update the copy in the file and you don't change its name, the new version gets used. And I've done that several times. All right. 
other slide things. Ah, so let's say things in your courses have different weights. I'm sure we've all done this. So let's grab a different course. Here we go. So here's a different course. And we have teaching, we have OSCEs, which are uh, observed structured clinical exams. And we have what we call teaching OSCEs, a chance for them to, a low stakes chance for a practical is what it comes down to. And so here's that TOSCE worth 100 points for itself, but the TOSCE is only worth 5% of the total course. Mm -hmm. These three little dots have become uh, friends to do that. Click on those three little dots, hit edit, and then we get to choose how much of the total course it's worth. Okay. And we can even throw out high and low scores. So let's look at this one. Our basic drug knowledge quizzes. It's got, it's worth 35% of their course and there's one rule. So if I hit edit here, again, 35% of the course, but it will automatically throw out the students one low grade. So if a student does badly, then that's okay. It's been thrown out. If they done, if they do badly twice, the the worst one gets thrown out, but the next better one stays. Or I could change that to whatever number I want. And if you're afraid that you have outliers, you have people that sometimes just do fantastic because it was too easy of a quiz, you can throw the highest grade out. Uh, students usually object to this one, by the way. <laughs> I wonder what. So, but if you're, if, if, you know, you have bad days and you have good days and your argument is I throw out the bad ones because you have bad days, there's an equally good argument. I throw out your best one because you have exceedingly good days and it shouldn't count. It doesn't represent your average work. You can also designate something in that that's never thrown out. So if I go back to my BDK quizzes and let's say, oh, it's ordered, by the way, this is one of those strange things. It orders them by due dates. And sometimes I've screwed up and changed, got the due dates wrong and not by the title. But let's say uh, BDK quiz eight is a, is a uh, summary that it is a, uh, a required quiz for them. So I can go in and again, edit, and I can say, never drop BDK quiz eight. Save that. And that, that quiz won't be dropped if it's their low grade. It won't be dropped if I had that as a high grade. It won't drop it either. It is. It will always be there. Making sense? All right. Um, Maria also asked, so an updated file automatically updates in the modules page. Yes. If the name didn't change. So Maria, if you've got, you know, intro to topic three and you put a new copy in, it's, Re, and you don't take the old one out. It's intro to topic three, parenthesis one, close parenthesis. That's a separate file. But if you delete intro to topic three, save the new one with the same file name, it will replace. All right. Ah. This comes back to the unlimited or limited number of submissions by a student. You cannot delete a submission. Okay, so I pick on my own group here, the, the rednecks. So Billy Ray Joe Bob uh, puts in a paper and he does a terrible job. And it's like, Billy Ray, I am not going to let you submit something so terrible and I'm going to delete it and you're gonna do it again. 
That's not possible. Okay, it is not possible for you to go into Canvas and delete that student's submission. Probably a good safety thing for those occasional times where we make a mistake and um, hopefully we never have anybody that's petty with a student and deletes an assignment because they're mad at a student. But it does help protect the student's rights in that respect. So if you want to give another attempt, you have to go and assign it to that student again, or like I do, set the number of submissions at a large number or unlimited and grade only the last one. All right, um, I'll come back to this slide in a moment. All right, now the other really nice thing that, um, let's see, do I have the right one? Yeah, this is my sandbox. So um, I think I had Melissa and Kathy set me up with this sandbox. So I can do anything to this that I want. Nobody sees it but me, there are no students in it. So I'm just gonna create a new assignment in front of you, all right? Big red, but right, so I go to assignments. I pick the big red button that says assignments and test assignment for Canvas Hour. And I put in something very official looking. Gook here for us, all right. And um, I put some points in. I get to assign what group it's part of. Is it part of assignments? Is it a test? Is it group work? Is it essay? Is it, whoops, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna create a new group that says something silly just for the Canvas Hour. And I add that group, okay? Um, I'm gonna have it letter graded. Then I have to create a grading scheme. It has a built-in grading screen, uh, scheme that I believe matches UIW's general grading scheme in a few places, but not everywhere. Right. And you can select others, okay? You can create your own and we can make it a practice by not counting it. We're gonna make it an online submission. We're gonna make it a file upload. I'm not gonna, let's say I'll make it a restricted type. We'll make it, how about docs or PDFs? Unlimited number, I'm not gonna review plagiarism and I'm gonna assign it to everyone. It's going to be due Saturday at midnight. And it'll, it'll be, it'll only be visible to the students to submit also to Saturday at midnight. There will be no late. And I will say that people can start submitting it or start seeing it on the 21st, today at 11.59. Oh, oh, you know what, I should have made that yesterday. Change it to the 20th. All right, so last night at one minute to midnight, it became visible, okay? Save and publish, all right? So I'm going to hit, I can hit save and it's there. And nobody can see it except for me and other instructor, instructors within the course. As soon as I hit publish, it's now visible for students to see. And there's more than one way to publish and unpublish. All right, I'm gonna go back to assignments and we have something silly just for the Canvas hour. And we see this hash through that is, this is an unpublished assignment. And if I look down to homework one, you'll see a checkbox there. It's a published assignment. I can publish this by clicking on the button. 
I can also unpublish it by clicking on the same button. Okay. Can a grading scheme be made for an entire program to be shared by all faculty? I believe so. I think the one that I saw was created by Adela and anybody at the university could see it. Um, I'll have to check with Melissa to see if there is a way to restrict it just, you know, Kathleen, if you wanna just restrict it to the BSN program or if you wanna make it wide open. So, and there we go. Melissa says each school can have their own. Um, yeah, and Terry says the scheme was based on main campus, you can create your own. And looking back, is there a way to indicate assignment as an extra credit assignment? Um, the simplest way to do that is to make it um, no points awarded for it. And then later when you give it points, those get added. So let's see if I can remember, I've only done that once. So let's go back to this test assignment and all right. Well, first off, I can't type well, so I can always go back and fix this and we'll make it zero points. And when this goes and we'll save this, it won't go into the, um, grading grade book until it's published. So I'll publish it and then we'll go to grades. And Melissa may have to help me with this. Let's see. Um, let's see. It's still listed as zero. Melissa, do you remember how to make this extra credit? Like just give the if I just assign it to somebody and give them points, it falls into this. So yeah, because you set it to zero points, any assignment worth zero points that's going to be counted towards a grade is going to be added on as extra credit. And okay. then what I think you're looking at right there is the group. If we can go back to the assignments page. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're right. I was looking at the group. Oops. Get back to my sandbox. So then because it's in. Gotcha. Yeah, it's 0% of the total grade because it's being weighted there. So that's like another layer of calculation. Okay. Maria, did that help a little bit? Uh, and Terry's comment back was, don't put it in an assignment group. Okay. So let me edit that. I think it has to go into an assignment group. Yeah, if you're weighting grades and you're using assignments groups, you, it will have to go in more. Yeah, I think it has to. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. Um, so these are a bunch of small points that are useful. And again, I've sent these slides over to Susan and we, you know, anybody that wants them, uh, you can either send me an email asking for them or um, Susan can distribute them if she wants, whatever is the best way, Susan. Sure, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Now I've got a question. So let's say uh, I wanted this uh, assignment that just got created to show up in my first module. Okay. What do I do? All right, so let's make a module, okay? module one, and I want an assignment here, okay? All right, so now I've got module one, I'm going to, let's see, edit, oops, sorry, wrong space. As you can tell, I have to play with this every once in a while to remember where every, to get sure. it places. And nope, that's not the spot. Let me go back to module. Choose files. I thought I could make an assignment go there. Uh, 
I hate to say it, but I've forgotten how to do it. Click the plus button. Oh, there it is. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. And now something silly just for the Canvas Hour. There we go. Now it's in that module. And the module is still not published, so students couldn't see it. But I click that, and the, both the assignment and the module are visible. One of the other strange little tricks is I can have the, uh, this is one of those pitfalls too. Right now I show the test assignment for Canvas Hour is published, but the module isn't. So they wouldn't see it inside a module, but they would see it inside assignments. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yep. Um, um, Michael, I thought I saw your hand up. Michael was saying goodbye. He had to catch his oh. train. Okay. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Okay. So Niles, if I'm going to create assignments, do I always start in assignments? Generally speaking, yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Now, if you're creating quizzes, you would crash right. starting quizzes and you can put the quiz, you know, that falls into the grade books the same way. You add a quiz. And as Melissa, are classic quizzes gone by fall? Is that correct? No, classic quizzes are around through next year. We're still using them actively. New quizzes are still under development and not quite hammered out. So I don't like to use new things until they're ready to go. Right. Um, you have a choice if you want to, but I stick with classic quizzes for right now. All right, and classic quizzes is what I generally use too. You can make it, remember it, so that it never brings this page up again. Maria, I'll go back to your question in a moment. I don't want to lose this train of thought, but you can, you know, quiz 19, okay, and describe your quiz there. And you have similar pieces um, to assignments. Is it graded? Is it ungraded? Is it a survey? So if you want to survey students, you can do that as well. You want to shuffle the answers for your questions? Do you want to give them a time limit, multiple attempts? Do they see their incorrect answers? Um, one of my favorites is re require an access code. So I build the quiz ahead of time. And then I put in silly access codes like Tuesday, if I'm giving the quiz on Tuesday. And next week on Tuesday, instead of Tuesday, I put the 23rd, if hopefully next Tuesday is the you know, Tuesday's the 23rd, is it? No, Tuesday's the 22nd, or whatever the case may be. So uh, always trying a little odd access code. Um, filter IP addresses. When I was at another university, um, we used filter IP addresses, and we made it so the students could only take the quiz from a particular classroom. We were having students that would sit down at their computer, be given the quiz um, access code and email or text it to their friends who were taking the quiz at home instead of in person. And so by locking down the IP address made that possible. Um, Melissa, have y'all approached this here yet? For IP addresses? Yeah. It's really, I mean, up to somebody if they wanted to use it. I have personally not had anybody ask about it. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, oh. let me make sure if I'm following this here. So um, creating an assignment, creating a quiz or similar kind of parallel activities. Right. You begin in assignment, begin in quiz, you specify everything you want to specify, and then you're able to move it over to the module. Is that right. pretty much the big picture? Mm-hmm. Great, thanks. One nice thing about quizzes, by the way, is you can create your, you know, a new question, okay, and give it details. You know, um, it has multiple formats available, multiple choice, true, false, multiple mm -hmm. multiples. Um, one of the headaches that I have found, if 
for classic quizzes is the default answer is the first one. And I am terrible at, you know, I put the wrong answer here, the wrong answer here, the right answer there, wrong answer there. And then I forget to switch it to the right answer is the third one. So roughly 10% of my quizzes are miskeyed. <laughs> and that's a bit of a headache. Now there's, there's, depends on how you've set the questions up, or how easy this is to fix. You can actually use question banks. So you go back to details um, and you can, and let me cancel this question and edit again. Questions. I can find questions. So I have question banks that I have already built. If you're using a question bank and you miss key it, correcting it in the bank does not correct it in the quiz. Let me say that again. If you're using a question bank and you miskey it, correcting it in the bank does not correct it in the quiz. And the reason for that really is that facts do change. I'll pick on my healthcare friends in the, in the pages here. You know, um, at one point in life, um, uh, beta blockers for heart failure were considered malpractice, and now they're considered standard of care. That had to change at some point. And if you change, if, if when that fact changed, then the you change the old quiz, it if it would regrade all those other quizzes that had been in before, it was changing students' grades. So, and somebody said, how do you upload? Uh, a question bank. I'm sure there is a way. I have basically written my questions in the question bank and then chose the questions from the question bank. Um, I'm sure there's a way to upload it, but um, we can uh, add questions to a question bank. Whoops. And we can view course question banks and I can add a question bank. And, oops, sorry, no questions. Click on it and add a question. And so this would be building a question in a question bank. You can name it, test bank one, you can give it a, um, a specific phrase. Uh, um, I, I did lots of uh, basic drug calculations and basic drug knowledge. So I could say um, uh, beta methazone generic. And I would be writing a question about what's the beta methazone generic. The student does not see the tag but you can to pick, help you pick questions. And again, those are those question choices. And then when you're in a quiz, and you wanna pick a question, you can do a couple of things. You can choose the questions individually that you want. Or I, in this case, I said, I edited this to say from a group, I call, and that group was pulmonary, pick seven questions, give two points per question. And another group, pick two questions, one point per question. So that I could say that everybody got five, uh, seven questions on pulmonology and one question on calculation and I had a variety of those questions. All right, let's see. Um, JT, I'll refer your question to Melissa about uh, Cengage Test Bank. 
And I think she may have already answered. And the bank, will, will the bank stay, um, Kathleen? Yes, it will. So those questions that you just saw were last semester's questions. And if I don't like a question anymore, one of the things I do is I have a question bank section for questions I don't like anymore. And I drag them to that other spot so that they're out of my active bank, but I haven't made the question go away completely. All right. Did I answer every question that had popped up? Susan always has good ones. It's like I planted her in the audience, but I think that's because that's her job. Okay, I got a couple questions actually, Niall. So let's say I'm thinking about the kinds of assignments I make. So if I am assigning kind of a formal paper, it's gonna have a rubric, I'm gonna grade it online. I say that I want to up that one that I want them to upload a file. Correct? Okay. Yep. Let's say I'm doing some little quick in class two minute um, writing thing where I'm just going to pick them up. Uh, that is no submission, but I need to say, but I need to create that if I'm going to put a grade in manually, correct? You could either put that as a no submission or you okay. can do it as a paper submission, but don't create a rubric for it if you're not going to create that. You know, let's say I, I just want them to write something, you know, let's, let's say it's an exit permit. I want them to write it on paper. Yep. You could so, just, you could do a no submission and pick it up. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is that no submission really means there is no piece of paper to go with it. And paper submission suggests that there is. So, you know, if you make it a no submission and a student actually doesn't give you something because they read no submission. Well, I didn't know I was supposed to submit. I, you know, another good example of when to use no submission might simply be class participation. Yeah. You, you keep a little checklist and every time somebody actually interacts in class, you're going to give them a point. You okay. Know. Well, let's go back. Let's go back to my, um, my little um, informal piece of writing. What's the best way for me to pick up those little pieces of paper, grade them manually? How, what I would, do I say I would, in Canvas? Okay, so we'll take test assignment for Canvas hour here. Uh, let me edit it. And I would pick um, on paper. Okay. And I don't have to have a rubric for that and you know, pick whatever grade. You know, are you just going to give them a done or didn't do? I might, yeah. Yeah, so I could just do complete and complete. Exactly. Sure. You know, but they have to give it to you. And it has, and it may be that complete means they actually answered your question, not whether or not you like the question. They, uh, just, like, is, they did it and they did what you wanted. And fortunately, well, Melissa... Yeah. Laura up. had a nice question that just popped up too. So, And, uh, and Melissa notes that a month from now, there'll be quizzes for more details. Yeah. Okay. Can you show an assignment to a module to a module in another section in the same type of course? So in the same, so Laura, do you want this in the same course? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Um, you know, say you're teaching two sections of the very same course. Like I'm teaching two world literatures. And, uh, but you know, you'd like something that, you, you know, a resource or anything that an assignment um, you know, that you want maybe from a composition class that you saw as a resource and you want to copy it to the world literature or, you know, something like a segment, a little piece that you want to copy to another course in Canvas. How do you do that? All right, well, I've got to think for a second. It's been a while. Um, now, if you can go over to modules, there's just a one click button. So once you've got something set up, you can do the three dots on either the whole thing or one item. So it'll say copy two. Got it. And then you'd select the course that you want to send it over to and it'll just push it out there. The whole module and then some certain items. Copy two is available for certain things, not everything, but for the most part, everything you're going to want to do would be handled that way. 
So if I wanted to take this test assignment for the Canvas Hour and send it over to another course, mm -hmm. I, could e I could easily do that. Yes. There we go. And it, let's say I'm going to uh, copy one item um, from module one. Will it show up in module one of my other section? It will ask you where you want to put it. OK. OK. All right. Um, somebody had asked earlier about weighting grades. And let's see. Here we go. So I'll go back to this course from before and um, decide up front what uh, I think it was. Uh, Maria, was that you that asked this question? Yeah, I think it was. About randomizing the question presentation? Yeah. No, about waiting. Oh, yeah, I did. But okay. Melissa, Melissa answered it. OK. Thank you. All right. And then you had another question then? Uh, if she said that there's going to be um, a presentation on quizzes. Since right. you were in quizzes, I thought I would just ask about randomizing the uh, question presentation and uh, response, right. order response options. But there's a little box, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's all the big things. Um, frankly, folks, one of the things that um, I did a lot of this last semester was practice quizzes. Um, our students really have to know basic drug knowledge about 300 or so drugs. And we quiz them every week over a different subset. And I, for about 10 drugs, I can come up with about 40 different questions that they ought to know. And so I wrote 40 questions every week and threw 40 questions into a practice quiz. And then when it came time for their actual quiz, I had the computer randomly pick 15 questions of those 40. So each student got a, and this is part of the COVID, uh, my response to COVID, uh, I didn't want every student to have the same quiz because there was no faculty supervision of these folks taking the quiz because they were doing them at random times. But they all got 15 questions randomly selected from the same pool so that they were of similar difficulty. And you could do that too with any topic. You could write, you know, here's topic one, here are five difficult questions. Here's the same topic. Here are five moderately difficult questions. And then here are five really, really simple questions. And say, set your quiz up to ask, you know, two simple questions, two moderate questions, and one difficult question. Every student would get a different quiz and then uh, but similar difficulty along the way if you did a good job building. But again, Melissa said we're going to have uh, someone doing quizzes in a month. All right. Can we get back briefly to uh, the module in different kinds of assignments and the percent that they're worth for the module's grade? Yeah, sure. So Modules aren't given a percentage. Assignments are. Okay. okay. An assignment. The percentage group. Of the assignment. So uh, assignment groups are. Let me get. Yeah. So um, let's say you've got, you know, what I have here are one, two, three, four, five, six different types of things that are graded and weighted. Where, where do you assign the weight? So here is this assignment group. And over here are three buttons, three dots. Click on that and hit edit. And that lets you assign okay, the group. Yeah. 
It came back. I remember. Okay. Thank you. No problem. This and is Niall, we put the, we we put assignments in a group over there in the assignment area. So when you make an when you make us an assignment, let's make a new assignment. Um, let's just do one here. So uh, add an assignment to Toski. To Toski, I can do it in right here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be a not graded. Some sort of gobbledygook. We are going to pick a time. We're going to click more options and we'll go back to that standard page. Okay. And then we'll pick an assignment group. I was building it in Toski, so it de defaults to Toski, but I can move it to anything else or create a new group. Does that answer your question, Susan? Right, so that, that essentially happens over in that assignment area, even though I might have started someplace else. It'll right. just take me there and show me those options. Yes. Thank you. Now, hopefully by demonstrating this stuff, you got a little bit better feel for it than a bunch of screenshots. But on the other hand, it makes me look a little disorganized. Uh, as we're going through this, because I don't know where we're going next, because it depends on your question. Um, are there other questions that maybe I can answer? And again, we've got Melissa in the background there who plays with this every day. They should pay her. Maybe they do. You know? <laughs> Just a little. Is that what you're saying? Melissa needs to be paid better, I think, is the message there. <laughs> other questions? I don't know about question, but maybe just an overall comment. Just so I'm, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with any of this. So some of this is way over my head, and I'm sure I'll get there. But basically, you have to make a quiz or an assignment in the quiz or assignment tab, and then when you're in your module, you can go get it. Correct. So it's kind of reverse engineering. Is seems to be the way everything Canvas does. Start with the specifics, and then you can broaden out to wherever you want to have it. Right. Now, you could also build that module and leave a space to add the quiz in later. You can do that. So let's say you've got a module with you know, three or four readings you want them to do, and then there's an assignment at the end of those readings. You could build the module with everything but the assignment. Or, and then go build the assignment and come back. No, well, now that you can actually, you have the option to build the assignment in the module. Right. You can build it any time. Right. The same thing with the quiz. And then you can just move those items around so you can, you can very easily order them. So, but you can build the assignment in the assignment tool or you can build it in the module. So if, fact, yeah, I'm sorry, if I build it in the module, will it then be put into the assignments? It yeah. actually takes you to assignments to build it. it it's, I won't say it's idiot proof, but it's, you know, resistant. <laughs> uh, how, what about uh, quizzes that were on Blackboard? Uh, did they transfer uh, to... Uh, some kind of shelf on uh, or file on on canvas melissa says yes yes your blackboard courses from 2020 so gosh let me think summer 2020 fall 2020 and spring 2021 we're all moved over and your quizzes will be right there in quizzes okay very good and Melissa, do you have to do anything to those quizzes or are they perfectly usable? Um, most of the time they're perfectly usable. Um, I've seen in some cases where the formatting of fonts look a little funny um, just because, you know, if you copy and paste from different places, then yeah. it comes in weird. But other than that, they, they're functional. What nice news. Thanks. Oh, and Michael says, check your quizzes that something's imported incorrectly. And Lynn says that some of her classes haven't moved over yet. So okay. a lot of stuff still in progress. 
Yeah, spring should be any day now. It was supposed to be early June, so might, might be running a little behind, but should be any time now. Okay, one, one last question about uh, it, uh, grading uh, a submission in, the, in a text versus something they upload. Did you say it was easier if it was in the text box? Um, that's a whole separate piece. The text box really is good for small. Short videos. answers, like short answers. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, that might be, you know, simply a single essay question you want them to answer in the text box. Um, Melissa, is there going to be a speed grader discussion, I'm sure? Yes. So um, the thing I would pay attention to is when speed grader comes up. Speed grader, speed grader is, is on the 19th, the 21st, the 23rd, and the 27th of July. Right. And so the nice thing about speed grader is you they post a, a paper in there and you can go into speed grader and see that student's paperwork. You can highlight, underline, make comments and record. And if you build a rubric, record your grade for it and then move on to the next student. Um, and so I would pay attention to that for grading papers in Canvas. Thank you. Uh, if I can follow up on that question on grading uh, papers, uh, because I'm going to teach a summer two class, so I'm a little bit worried. I'm trying to get all the information now. But um, the if you're encountering a student, sometimes I've had a student who uploads uh, an actually a blank Word document instead of their essay. And usually I'll ignore the attempt or clear that attempt. And they have other attempts that they've done with the actual essay. Is there ability, do we do that in Canvas? Is there, we ignore the attempt or, so you know, I don't know how it there, works. There is no way to ignore that. If you say they're allowed to upload one paper and they uh, upload a blank one, then there's not an easy way around that. My solution is give them unlimited attempts and a deadline. And they have until the deadline to make sure they have uploaded a paper and I tell them I'm only grading the last one. Um, the way around it, if you do say, you know, you get three attempts and on the third one, they've still got it wrong, is you can go back and make a special assignment of that assignment just for them to submit again. Okay, okay, got it. I usually have unlimited uploads, um, submissions, and then a, a late date, you know, the assignment date, then I'll mark them late. What I usually do is I give them a zero. Oftentimes I'll give them a zero because then they know they'll get that zero notification and they'll pay attention to it. And then I'll say, upload it, upload the correct one and I'll regrade it or something. So hopefully it'll work out then similar. Yeah, you it could do that by similar. adding a separate assignment for them. So if we go back to this and edit. Let's say they fail to enter this one and you know it was assigned to everyone. You can go back and add and add that one student. I'm just gonna and give them a new do, new due date for the next submission and it allow them to upload it but not anybody else. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, one, one question about uh, uploading a paper versus the text uh, possibility. Can a student uh, do a Word document and then uh, select all and then copy it into the text? Um, yes, but I think there is a character limit and I don't remember what it was. It was not the full length of most papers. It was still sort of short answer if I recall correctly. Okay. All right. Good. And I think your formatting is not going to be right. Very your formatting good. all goes. Away. Formatting goes to hell. Okay. Uh, one of uh, something that you said, uh, Dr. Barnes, Barnes, is that the first few times that you're using Canvas is you can give them inter, uh, unlimited attempts, and when you do the next, every time a student does another attempt, it it, it takes out the previous one. 
Um, my experience has been the previous one still is still there. Okay. I, th I thought it, uh, I thought I could have sworn it took out the other one, but you're I, probably, I, I, it gives you a list of ones to choose. That's okay. I always, I always tell it I'm choosing the last one. Oh, okay. And Lord's asked, I thought you can clear the attempt manually, not in canvas. That's a blackboard feature. Okay. Okay, well, Niall, thank you very much. I really appreciate everything you've shared with us. Uh, and um, I think we are past time. So uh, let's all say goodbye. I just put a link. Thank you. I just put a link in the chat for the YouTube recordings. Just wanted everyone to know we're working on making sure all of the recordings are up. If 